And we've actually asked one of them uh, from Fidelity to share today a bit about how they're doing scorecarding and using some of those KPIs and metrics to uh, measure internally how different groups are doing. So I uh, definitely want to welcome Zach Scytham, who uh, sits on our governing board, and then Noel Crowley, who also is in one of those Tech Advisory Council seats that we mentioned, to share a bit about what they're doing there. Zach, Noel? Thanks, Dior. Um, first off, apologies. Zach got pulled away last minute, um, so isn't ah. going to be here today. So unfortunately, uh, you're stuck with my voice through this. Um, oh, sure. So apologies for that. Um, so uh, so let me, I wanted to talk today about the Fidelity's cloud journey. Um, first of all, for anyone who's never heard of Fidelity, we're a financial services company uh, privately owned by the Johnson family. We predominantly do personal investment, stock plan services and 401ks. We do those, I think, pretty well. Um, and we've been doing those in our entirety. Uh, for the last 17 years, though, that I've been with Fidelity, uh, we're I've always felt we were more of a technology company. And even to quote our former chairman, we're a technology company that does financial services. Uh, in 2016, we started our journey to the cloud. We, we deployed our first application out there. Uh, we launched our technology strategy to be a multi-cloud uh, environment, as well as planning to have 70% of our, of, of, of our applications in the public cloud by the end of 2024. Um, we, or Zach and myself, we work for centralized IT. And as part of that, uh, the enterprise cloud computing business unit, we hold ourselves to three pillars, to safety and security adopt the cloud at scale, to do no harm to our brand, and to adopt the cloud in a cost-effective manner. So as we started to migrate to the cloud, uh, the next slide there, please. Um, we, we created our Fidelity FinOps focus, right? Uh, for us and for FinOps, we started to migrate and we created our FinOps practice. Uh, collectively, uh, we, held we, we, we took responsibility for achieving uh, a value for our cloud spend, right? As I said earlier there, about adopting the cloud in a cost-effective manner. So when we created these, this focus, these focus areas for ourselves, we wanted to have cross transparency to make our costs visible, financial controls, have checks and balances between technology and financial orgs, have purchasing strategies so we decentralize FinOps team, uh, IT optimization around automation for developers or engineers, uh, improve the utilization when they, were, when they were using the compute, and most importantly, to get the best value for every dollar we spent in the cloud. But, Ultimately, at all this, we wanted to create a culture of accountability. So we had to kind of look at what tooling and what information, how we get that out there for people around dashboards and KPIs and stuff like that. So with that, we started to do, we, we created our, our intranet, our first intranet. Uh, so next slide there, please. Uh, we created our intranet, our highway to the cloud, as we call it internally here. Uh, this is a first port of call for all technologists, for everybody in Fidelity um, as, as they start their, their cloud journey. Uh, it provides the information on the different cloud service provider platforms and products, and it makes it easy for application teams to deploy their workloads to the cloud. So information there for FinOps predominantly, as well as everything else that we provide from, from, from central IT. So we've got governance and networking and everything else. So it's just an internal site to get information out there. Um, when we when we have this site, then we start to transition them out there to native tooling from our providers. Uh, so both uh, depending on if they want to utilize, uh, sorry, depending on if they're going to have their application to be born in the cloud out there, or if they're going to migrate an existing application out there, depending on which uh, which provider they use, they may be using the AWS cost management and trusted advisor tools. They may be uh, they may be encouraged to use that if they're using predominantly AWS applications. It's out of the box. It's day one information that gets them there and it gets them an understanding their costs. Uh, sorry, uh, next slide again, please. Um, as well as that, then there's also the Azure uh, cost management and advisor tool. These are there, as I say, these are tools that are native straight away for people to use um, with documentation, how to use them and, and understanding on them. Uh, could you go on again, please, JR? And then, so as I said, we have these tools out there to get the visibility for users to, to developers and everything else to get out there and get their information. As well as that, we then had the, the decision to make to go, do we, do we develop or do we go and use a third party tool to get really into the nitty gritty and the details of the spend? Um, at the time, we decided we would use a, a vendor tool. Um, it, gives us, it gives us great, great visibility into our cost by business unit, by account, by environment. Um, as I said, we're a multi-cloud uh, provider organization. So this gives us just basically a single pane of glass to get that data of the spend out to our, to our, to our, to our, to our application development teams. Um, we have a, an extremely good tagging policy in place. So we can basically get the cost right back to the penny for, for these teams using these third-party tools. Uh, and, and, and it saved us having to go initially to, to develop that. 
that, right? Um, it helps us to make the information and the views that we present to people, it's actionable to them. It's, it's exactly what they're doing and helps them to, to understand how they're spending it. But sometimes with these, like we kind of went that there's not one tool that does everything for everybody. Um, so we have also gone and we've developed tools ourselves as well as dashboards. Um, we have we have tools like Notifier, as we call it, which basically is an in-house tool that we have developed that pulls data from our various different tools that uh, applications that we're using, and it sends the information via email or instant message uh, to the person who can take an appropriate action and and and, and that is useful to them. As I say, as shown here, we also have our KPIs, which we use to bubble up our information, but to a business unit level. Um, and this it, this helps us to 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 um, sorry, this helps us with the uh, with with the information and making it it, it it better for them, right? So we have we have our three pillars of our KPIs, which show slightly different information for everybody. Um, they're for our CIOs and their senior leadership teams. Then as we, were, as we were maturing our practice, we were looking at other tools that were out there. So we've got observability, we've got security, um, tools that were purchased for the firm for different reasons. They were never brought in for FinOps. They weren't there originally for that, at, predominantly for that at all. So as we looked at them, we went, are they able to provide us data that can give us uh, cost avoidance and saving opportunities? Um, I have on the screen there, I've got some sample bots. We use our security tool that, that goes out there and we use our bots. These bots help us to provide hygiene and clean up the, 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 the cloud space after our developers have been there. We want them using the innovation the cloud provides for them. So if we can automate stuff to, to make their life easier, we will try and do that. Um, we know that this is never ending and these are just a sample. Like we've got Lumber Zach, which is top left one there. He just goes out there and he turns off your EC2 instances at the weekend. We've got Oscar who goes out there and cleans up the trash. If you've got nowhere to send your traffic from a low balancer, we'll delete it for you. We've got our volume cleanups, our snapshot removals, and there's information up there from previous working groups um, on finops.org as well about that about that one as well. So we, we've got uh, observability tools as well that helps us to look at the utilization of our existing compute, stuff that, is beyond what we're getting natively out of out of our tooling, out of out of the, the cloud service providers, and gives us that information to help us to look at our Kubernetes um, and get more information for people to be able to take actions and, and utilize. So we also have our going back again to my KPI dashboards, which is where we bring all of this data into. It's on the next slide there, please. We bring it all in from all of these different observability tools, our, our, our security tools, um, and as well as our cost management tools. We bring it all in. We got our right sizing recommendations from, from, from third parties, from, C, from the cloud provider native tools, as well as I specialized, specialized tools for Kubernetes and things like that. Um, when we bring all that in, we kind of go, where is that data coming from? Is it coming from CloudWatch? Is it coming from the third party agents? And how can we utilize it? How can we build it up? So as I said, we have our three pillars there for our, for, our, for, our, for our KPI. But below each of those pillars, we've got supporting metrics. So we've got more information that allows our teams to drive down to. Again, pulling it all together, allowing them to then dig in and go further and further into the information. Um, I have there, just, as I said, a snapshot of my business unit score, of the business unit scores. And if I go to the next tool there as well, we take that and we drive it even further back down and get into our senior leadership team, right? And we create a leaderboard of senior leaders. I've just got it blacked out there, just at the names and stuff like that. But what that shows us is we create this hall or this wall of, of fame, as opposed to, you know, traditionally you create a leaderboard and you're trying to shame the guys at the bottom to get to the top. What we actually try to do here is to show the success that is being done by our engineers, by our, by our, by our, by, by, by the people using the cloud, how they are making things better um, with the information we're able to get to them, right? So as we matured our practice, we want to do more with all the data that these different tools can give us. So we would try and pull this data out and make it back visible to, to people. Um, so in, in closing, I guess uh, we, we're still on a learning journey as we use these tools. Um, we have, we have as I said, about 17,000 technologists working on about 11,000 applications with Infidelity. And we know it's going to be difficult to get the developer community to move on any one tool. So what we try to do is we have our takeaways, um, which is when we look at this stuff, um, we have making our, our FinOps data visible, right? Which is, you know, uh, one of the, the principles of FinOps anyway, FinOps Foundation, I should say. Uh, you know, you must know what your bill is. You must know what you are consuming. Um, we are always trying to say, looking at the tools we have, um, when I think of that one, use the tools that are there. So we never thought about our observability tools or our security tools as being able to help us from a FinOps point of view at the start. And we probably would never have gone and purchased those tools to do FinOps stuff. 
but they give us information that is useful to us and helps us. There's always new tools coming. There's always new people trying to sell you stuff. But sometimes maybe you've got something that's there as well that you can use that's there. So can you take the data from those tools, make it actionable and meaningful to your, to your end users? And then what we're trying to do is put the engineer, or probably put the data where our engineers are. Can we create their culture, a better culture of accountability for them? Um, if everyone is responsible for their spend, can we can we get information out to where it's to them? They may not always be able to come to my dashboard. They maybe have a load of dashboards already that they're being sent to, to look at. So what we're trying to do is putting that information out there again, developing tools ourselves that will do that for us again. Or so notify our tool to get that information back out to the edge. Um, so that's uh that's our tooling. That is amazing. All the comments in the chat have been blowing up. Um, I've been collecting a, a bunch of questions that folks have for you. Um, based on time, we're gonna need to move forward, but we do have the breakouts at the end. So I'm hoping you can stay around for a bit to answer questions at that point, because people people wanna know a lot about this. Um, so thank you so much for hearing the overview. No problem. Thank you. All right. JR here from the FinOps Foundation. Thank you for watching. Please go to FinOps.org if you want to get plugged into this amazing community. And of course, hit subscribe right here on YouTube to get all the future content. Hope to see you soon.